Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, uh, still on Mathematics N3, that is uh, working on derivatives. So in this platform, we have a question that we are going to consider from uh, April 2015, that is uh, question number four. That is uh, the first part of our question was 4.1 to determine divide x by using the rules of differentiation and we are asked to leave uh, the answers with positive indices, which is positive exponents and in set form. So as you can see, the three marks, three marks for this. All right. So that is our first part of our question, which is 4.11, where we are given uh, y, which is equal to two minus two over x minus two square root of x. So how can we simplify or how can we rewrite this in a manner that we can be able to uh, factorize? That is the question where we are given y being minus two over x. So remember that uh, the format that we need is to have in the form of ax to the exponent of n. Uh, remember that if y is equal to this, then the derivative of y with respect to x must be equal to a n x to the exponent of n minus 1, multiply by the exponent, then subtract 1 on the exponent. So if we have got this format, then we can be able to have our derivative. So let us start with the 2 over x, which is uh, k, which can be written as a uh, y is equal to minus 2x to the exponent of negative 1. Remember, 1 over x is x to the exponent of negative 1. So this is same as negative 2 times 1 over x, which gives us uh, negative 2 times x to the exponent of minus 1, which is going to give us this part of uh, negative 2x to the exponent of negative 1. Then we've got the square root of x in this case. So from the square root of x, this can be written as to the exponent of a half. So we've got minus 2x to the exponent of a half. Then we can determine, uh, since we have the format, this part that we have been talking about, ax to the exponent of n. So that means we can now determine our derivative with respect to, our, uh, to x, that is dy dx. Uh, that is going to be, uh, remember, n here multiplies a. This is your a. So it's negative 1 times negative 2. Negative 1 times negative 2, which is going to give us a positive 2. Then we've got x. We subtract a 1, that is any minus 1. So you subtract 1. So that is minus 1, minus 1, which is going to give us uh, negative 2. Uh, the same thing here. This is your a. So you're going to have your a in this case like this. So you multiply by, a, by n. So it's half of negative 2. So if you multiply negative 2 by a half like this, we are going to obtain negative one. That's this will cancel. We obtain negative one. So this will be uh, negative one, which is just negative X. Negative one X is just same as negative X. Then we subtract ne one on the exponent. So that will be half minus one, which is uh, a negative half. So this will give us a negative half in this case. But remember the instruction that you're given is to have our answers with the positive exponents, which is positive indices and in set form. So what are we going to do is we are going to simplify further the resultant that we are given in this case in terms of positive exponents and also in set form. If we take note of uh, the previous part, uh, okay, let me remove this part. If we take note of the previous part, we had a condition where we are having first as positive exponent and is us who wrote this as negative exponents so that we can simplify. Now it's a, another case rewriting back to those formats as positive. So I said one over simply means we are removing a negative from that part that is carrying a negative exponent. So this will be two over x to the exponent of two. That's we have removed the negative that is affecting the exponent of x minus we have got x to the exponent again of a negative. So we're going to remove the negative by one over. So if it's one over x to the exponent of a half in this case. So this is what you're going to have. But also in said form, yes, these are positive exponents. But out of these, we can see that here we've got a fractional exponent, which we can write as in said form. From x to the exponent of a over b, a fraction can be written as the b root of x to the exponent of a, where we are now having the b under the square root. So this will be the square root of x, x to the exponent of a half. So that means, therefore, 
uh, the derivative of y with respect to x is going to be 2 over x squared minus 1 over x to the exponent of a half, which is same as the square root of x. So that is what we have in this format. Uh, we've got uh, positive exponents also in set form. Uh, so that was our question 4.11. 4.12 is still the same application that we are going to have. Uh, so in this case, we are given the, uh, that y is equal to, that's a fraction in this case, uh, x uh, plus x cubed over 5x squared. And I also say it whenever you've got a fraction, if you check, they repeat same format of questions, fractions, Whenever you have a fraction like this, make sure you expand A plus B over C is the same as A over C plus B over C. So that means we can separate this X with 5 over 5X five squared, also this with 5X. So we are going to separate in that manner. So that means we are going to have our expression as Y is equal to X over, that is, a over C, just like A over C. So that is X over 5X squared plus, we have got X cubed in this case. So that is X to the exponent of three over 5X squared, each and every term divided to 5X squared. So that means we can simplify first our expression. Remember what we need Y is equal to AX to the exponent of N. So here, we can first uh, start by, uh, let us start by reducing this. We know that if we are dividing the bases, which are the same, we are going to subtract the exponents. So here we've got a one. So that is the same as X to the exponent of a one divided to X to the exponent of a two, where we are going to subtract our exponents one minus two, which is going to be minus uh, one. So that's one minus two which is minus one. So that means here we obtain one over, take note, this is one over here. We've got something like one over five for this part. So this is going to be written as one over five for this number, which is in the denominator. But for the X, we divided these two and we got X to the exponent of negative one like this. All right, so that's the same thing here. We do the same way. This is same as one over five. This part here is same as one over five. So we are going to have this as plus one over five. Then we can apply our laws of exponents here where we are dividing X to the exponent of three with X to the exponent of two, where we are going to subtract our, ex our exponents in this case. This is X to the exponent of three minus two, three minus two which is a one. So that will be X to the exponent of a one, which is same as just X in this case. All right. So if we have got X, that means we can find our derivatives here. Remember that uh, as long we have got this format of Y is equal to AX to the exponent of N, it follows that the derivative of Y with respect to X is equal to AN X to the exponent of N minus one. So that means here we are going to have now the derivative. Now we are calculating the derivative of Y with respect to X. All right, so let us start with the first part. Our exponent is uh, negative one. This is your A according to this part. This is your A. So you multiply one over five with negative one. So this will give us negative one over five. So that's negative one over five X to the exponent you subtract one on the exponent. So minus one, minus one, this will give us a negative two. So that's negative two. Uh, the same part here, but here you can just take it direct. Remember I said if y is equal to ax, where it's a lean, this one is a linear expression where the highest exponent is a one. You can simplify the derivative of y with respect to x by being a, this part representing the gradient. So the derivative of y with respect to x, if it is a, that means if I'm having 1 over 5x, I'm just going to take the coefficient of x there, which is 1 over 5. So our answer is just going to be 1 over 5. Or you can apply the same format of ax to the exponent of n. It's just one and the same thing. All right, so that's what we have. But remember now the instruction is not just to uh, find the derivative, but also to leave 
the answers with positive indices and in said form. So let us uh, apply that concept to say this part, yes, it's our final answer, but is it having positive exponents? We do not have that quantity because we've got a negative, so we're supposed to rewrite this. So that's dy dx is equal to x to the exponent of 1 over 2. So the 1 over 5 is going to remain as it is. So we're going to remain with negative 1 over 5 multiplied to x to the exponent of uh, negative 2, which is same as 1 over x squared. So this is same as 1 over x squared. If we remove the negative, remember, it's 1 over. So that's negative 1 times a positive 1, which is going to give us a uh, negative 1 over 5 times x squared, which is going to be 5x squared, like this. All right, 1 over 5, there's nothing that we can do. We do not have x here, so we're just going to rewrite it as 1 over 5. So this is what we are going to have uh, at the end, as we can see from our simplification uh, in this manner. What we need is to have our expressions properly uh, written, uh, that is the most important part. Here we subtract everything, then we can simplify further. All right, so that is our question. All right, so that is what we had. So all we need is to make sure of the question that you're given and how to apply it. And we saw that we have got uh, the second part of our question here, where I have got a derivative, but it's an application, this part here uh, on 4.2. Consider Vic 3 below determine the x coordinates of the turning point the turning points p and q so we've got the turning points of our function which is at point p and at also point q so we need the the x coordinates only the x coordinates so this function that we are having uh is just going to help us to locate where is our p and where is our q but that is not important for now. What is important is how do you determine the values of x at the turning point of a certain function, which we are given in this case as f of x is equivalent to uh, x cubed minus 9x. Remember I said at any turning point, as long you are referring to a turning point, the first derivative which refers to dy dx is equal to zero. So if the first derivative means divide x. So what you're simply doing here is to find the first derivative from your function that you're given. What will be the first derivative with respect to x? Okay, we are back to the issue. Yeah, we are multiplying three and one, which is going to be three. We subtract one. So that's x to the exponent of three minus one, which is two. X, yeah, remember I said the derivative of ax gives us that a. So here we are just going to take the negative nine on x. So that is a negative nine. So that is our derivative with respect to x. So we are saying this derivative with respect to x must be equal to zero. So that means we are going to equate this whole function from our first derivative to zero. So that means we are going to have this as three x squared minus nine is equal to zero because we are having this at the turning points. All right, so we can determine the values of x. Yes, you can use your factorization, which is fine, but you can even transpose the positive, the negative nine to the right-hand side so that it can be a positive since we do not have x here. So we can divide by three both sides since three is multiplying. So that's x squared is equal to uh, that is going to be 3 into 9, which gives us a 3. Then in order to obtain x, we've got the square. We introduce the square root both sides. That's, that's we are having the exact values of x, which is x is going to be the square root of uh, 3. We can't determine this direct, so we can just leave it like that. But we know that the square root of any number is a plus or a minus. So we are going to have plus or minus square root of three. So these are the values of x, which can be x at uh, square root of three, which is plus, or the x, which can be at negative square root of three. So which, pa which part here corresponds to square root of three and which one corresponds to negative square root of three? From our graph here, if we can check properly, p is on the negative side. This is our zero, p is on the negative side. So P is the one that is going to carry a negative. Q being on the positive side is the one that is going to carry a 
positive. So that means at, uh, we, are, we are simply saying in this case, at uh, point P, that is at P, our X is equal to negative uh, square root of three. Then at uh, Q, in this case, at point Q, our X at this point is uh, equivalent to positive square root of three. So this, you can just write it as square root of three. So that was your question. If you need the point, now the exact point is now given in terms of X and Y. So to find the value of Y, you can substitute into the original equation in our F of X, where you are given F of X being X cubed minus nine X squared. So there you can determine the exact values of uh, of y now which is a point but here the question was the x values at p and at q all right so that was our question guys uh from Amazon african motives uh working on mathematics and three uh till we meet again